Prophetess Debbie Day, 7750 Media. The time is 528. And let me begin by reading Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. And it says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. It is the 7th of November, and I'm stating the obvious, and the 6th of Shezran on the Hebraic calendar. 7 times 9 makes the number 63. And if you're already used to my numbering system, you'll know that number 63 goes with Whitney Houston. And it also goes with the current king of Lesotho. 7 times 11 is 77. 77 is a number that is associated with Christ, but it's also a very spiritually loaded number, and it appears a lot in the Bible. And it obviously is significant to the name of 7750 because that's precisely how God gave it to me. On the Hebrew calendar, it's the sixth of the eighth month. So six times eight is 48 for Israel. And 68 is for the kingdom of Eswatin. The estranged husband who has gone to some lengths to convince people over the years that I lock myself in the house because I am demented like his mother has again sent threatening messages to my family. First and foremost, he starts his latest message, which was sent to at least one of my sisters two days ago, with the prefix or the address Sbali. And Sbali is a word that is used to address a brother-in-law in Siswat. In the first place, he has moved out of the marital home in May 2024, and on the 18th to be precise, which was the weekend of Pentecost and the seventh anniversary of the death of his goddaughter. He did not inform me that he was moving out, and I only saw when he removed his personal items and certain pieces of furniture that he was moving. I have never asked him about his move because over the, over the years, the only thing that he uses to address me are such phrases as piss of SHIT and I'm often spoken to with words such as F you F off. Even in front of my children. Secondly, he has moved because he has found greener pastures. Where I am sure that he has seen that money and resources to pamper him with all his heart's desires are available. Be it business or political networks and better flows of narcissistic supplies including welcoming in-laws. The message sent to my sister or my sisters again goes on about how my family thinks it's fine for your sister, I'm referred to as your sister, to my sisters, to be insulting and denigrating everybody from the old king in Lesotho, his family, his friends and everybody. It's totally unacceptable and you people, my, 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 my family are being told, they are being called you people keep digging your head in the sand. These kinds of things typically, unfortunately, end in tears. He has said in his uh, message, and he states, I repeat, the royal family in Lesotho is not amused at all and will take steps to prevent the abuse of their name by your senseless sister. It was around about 4.22 when I was writing this narrative 
The Lord woke me up around 2.30 this morning and it was impossible for me to go back to sleep. The last person I spoke to and prayed with before going to sleep was my friend Portia. Another meaning of the name Portia, other than being the name of Brutus's wife in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, is a portal. So I understand that the Lord is telling me, or he's letting me know that a heavenly portal or gateway is open for me to engage. In essence, when the patriarch Jacob saw a stairway to and from heaven, he perceived it as a gateway to God and to heaven. I am 51 years old at the moment, and I have been in this relationship since I was 20 years old. My youngest daughter is 20 years old right now, and I consider her to be very young, and I will never, ever allow her to be dating a 27-year-old man, which is what happened to me. This was 31 years ago now, from around July of 1993. And if you look at that number, 1993, you can call it an upside down 63 or a 39 or a 36. The age of priesthood service is 30. So this relationship has entered the age of priesthood already. Because I've always known that God is going to use my situation and this marriage for his own kingdom purposes. The marriage itself is now 25 years old, going on 26. I have been describing how the husband I married and had two children with has conspired with his family of doctors and with affirmations from them that their king and royal family were on their side to commit a medically motivated murder of my person at various intervals over the last 14 years. I have five other siblings and my mother is still alive. And they all know my ordeal in this marriage. The reason I am alive to tell my story is because I have sought the Lord's face for my life. And he gave me my purpose and a vision. The justice system has been unjustly used by a perpetrator of the most extreme forms of narcissistic abuse, causing severe trauma to myself and to my children. And with the support system of all the people that he counts in his latest threat, he has only gotten worse. The burden to fight the cause of gender-based violence perpetrated by men against women and young girls because of narcissism and grandiosity, putting it mildly, is something I have become passionate about. All of the time the Lord has had me studying the most heartbreaking of cases, of women who have gotten into relationships thinking they would be loved, only to be killed in cold blood. One of these cases is that of Riva Steenkamp, who was killed by a sportsman, Oscar Pistorius. I can't remember whether it was Pistorius or Pretorius, whichever one it was. Through these cases, the Lord would show me that I was dealing with a cruel and brutal person as well as an establishment. That was clear. Back in 2010, Annie Diwani, born Hindosha, was lured into a deadly marriage. And all the women whose stories and lives the Lord has used to let me know that if I did not focus on him and his guidance, and if I took myself out of his will and purpose, the same fate awaited me. The royal family of the kingdom of Lesotho are not immune from God's laws and his judgment. They all know that I got married to this man, and they are all witnesses to the marriage. Because they have entertained him and his girlfriend's concubines' mistresses and at various levels of interactions, he now has a Lesotho National Development Corporation called the LNDC Diary, which was furnished to him 
as my understanding goes, because he is a Mosotho national who was contributing back to his country as well as its development. He has turned this LNDC diary into a sex scoring diary filled with pages and pages of various categories where he scores women and even counting the frequency of sexual encounters while he remains married to me and has been married to me. And all the while he has been threatening my family, telling them that I have a mental illness that is untreated. This constitutes a gross abuse of not just the system, of, of, of the justice system in this country, but the medical profession. And I will not participate in letting this happen to me any longer. I will now also make it my mission to raise awareness about these kinds of things at the highest levels as God guides me, because I am not going to be a murder statistic on the altar of this morally rotten establishment. And I'm going to leave this here for now. Thank you for listening. <laughs>